that lineup, but you also have some good offense involved too. Kenny Mallory Jr. will lead it off for Elon, who swings at the first pitch and flies it down the left field line. Bristol Carter making the run over, stops in foul ground and makes the catch. One pitch and one away here in the first. And just what Jaden Winter needed. And it'll bring up Charlie Granitel. Now this Elon team offensively, we mentioned numbers on the offensive side, a team average of right above 270 right now. But pitching has been what their weakness has been since really all season. First pitch to Granitel is a fastball at 92 for strike one. And Charlie Granitel, one of those better hitters in the lineup for Elon, hitting 328 at the moment. The 0-1 from Winter. Breaking ball just misses a little bit up and inside. One ball and one strike. A little bit of a shift put on by the Pirate infield. Dixon Williams behind that second base bag. As Winter delivers the 1-1. Swinging a high drive down the left field line. That'll get out of play foul. And Winter moves ahead. One ball in, two strikes. And it's good to be back home here at Clark LeClair Stadium after being on the road all last week with that midweek game at NC State and a three down in Boca Raton. One, two, called strike three. Good hook there from Winter. And a quick start for Jaden Winter on the mound, two away. And three pitch mix. A tall, lanky right-hander. Fastball, which is good. We've seen 92-93 tonight, but also uses that split as his breaking ball and a good change. So quickly two away. No score here in the top of the first inning. Ryan Sprock at the dish. First pitch, misses a little bit inside, ball one. Uh, Pirates in their pinstripe uniforms tonight. Purple caps with ECU across the chest. Elon in the red tops with the gray pants, that traditional road look. 1-0, there's a strike on that low outside corner. 1-1. One one. Ryan Sprock, 284 player, spent some time on the mound this, this season as well. 12 extra base hits this year as well for the right-handed hitter. 1-1, one, one. this is fouled out of play right over top of us. And Winter moves ahead, win ball, two strikes. Doing a very good job of pumping strikes here in this first inning is Jaden Winter. Looking to make quick work of the Phoenix here early. One, two pitch on the way. Swing a one bouncer to short, Marini down on one knee to field it, then throw over the first in plenty of time. The first time we saw them earlier in the year. It certainly seemed this way and this short right hander High 80s, he's gonna have to hit spots. He'll have to throw strikes. Riley Johnson will lead it off for the Pirates and take the first pitch, low it away for ball one. Riley Johnson, Carter Cunningham, and Jacob Jenkins Cowart, the first three do up in this Pirate order. Pretty much the same lineup from Sunday's matchup against FAU. 1-0, there's a strike at 87, one ball and one strike. Riley Johnson average sitting at 294 right now. And still a solid season it has been for Riley in that leadoff spot. The 1-1, one, one, low and away. Two balls and one strike. Which Riley with a decent series against FAU as well. Picked up three hits down in Boca. And overall offensively, other than Saturday, it was a good weekend for the Pirate offense. 2-1 pitches outside. Three balls and one strike. And really, they hit the ball in that game on Saturday against FAU. Just didn't hit it at the right times is what it amounted to. Nark with the 3-1. Square from Johnson pulls it back and takes it high for ball four. Well, Scotty, it really seems like Raleigh Johnson's drawing a lot of walks, especially leadoff walks, and that's just what the Pirates need, not only with his speed, but the ability to manufacture runs, Pirates can take early leads. And that was one thing in the FAU series that whenever East Carolina got the leadoff man on, most of the time they scored. As it's Carter Cunningham at the plate, third baseman will play a little bit in the cutout. First pitch, low and away ball one. And you go back to Sunday's game against FAU, that big fifth inning where the Pirates batted around. They had good situational hitting there in that fifth inning, and that was the one thing they lacked on Saturday in game two. Uh, toss over the first by Nark to check on Johnson as he's back in in time. 
The Pirates had 14 hits in game two of that series, but left 11 men on base. Another throw over the first. This one gets away from Sprock. Johnson will hop up and go in the second, standing up. And a throwing error there on the pickoff attempt. We'll move Johnson to second, and already the Pirates with a man in scoring position here at the bottom of the first. And you could call it unforced mistakes, but the Pirates really force a lot of this. But just by Johnson getting on, Cunningham at the plate, so many opportunities. <clears throat> well, the Pirates looking to start early on the scoreboard here at the bottom of the first inning with a man in scoring position. 1-0, Cunningham flies this one in the air to left. Mallory will shade over a couple of steps, make the catch as Johnson will tag from second throw, goes to third, tag is applied, and he's safe. And Elon is going to ask for a challenge on this, it looks like. It was a close play there at third. As third base umpire Steve Sanders saying that he got that hand in there just in time. But head coach Mike Kennedy of Elon and also third baseman Connor Offshack thinking something different here. And the umpires are going to go take a look at this with a challenge from Mike Kennedy. Umpire Steve Sanders with a good look right on top of the bag. That was really close. But Pirates get the call. And I believe it's going to be Wilson Rayner and Mike Parnell, the ones going to look at this. And we'll get a look up here in the booth as well. It was a good slide by Johnson. Well, it's always good to be back in Greenville, but Pirate fans, Pirate baseball, warm weather, oh, really nice. So went away here at the bottom of the first for Jacob Jenkins Cowart, someone who did have a good weekend against FAU, three hits including a home run. As the Elon infield moves over to the right side a little bit, first pitch from Nark, way outside, ball one. Jenkins Cowart right now riding an 11 game hit streak coming into today. And this is a bat that isn't getting four or five hits a game, but it's consistently hitting good right now for the Pirates. 1 0, there's a strike on the outside corner, one ball, one, one strike. And someone, too, that had some big hits in that series against FAU. Their baseman plays a little bit in. Win one in the other batter's box for ball two. And Nark's best fastball to this point's been 87. He can't afford to make mistakes. The uh, Pirates trying to get on the scoreboard first here in the first inning with a man on third and one out. 2-1 pitch, swing and a miss. Good one there from Nark, kept it low at 81. And the count evens up at two balls and two strikes. And in situations like this right now on the offensive side, these are the ones that East Carolina prides themselves in, which is guys on third with less than two outs. 2-2 two -two pitch. Low it away, could take there by J.C., full count. And these are the situations too, Coach O, that you have to be good in. You can't, you cannot give up a situation where you have a guy on third with less than two outs. Yeah. And the old saying, the base hits will come. So score without base hits is just a plus. 3-2 pitch. Low and away, ball four. Second base runner of the inning. That was been walked. It's first and third for Ryan McChrystal. And as good as Carter Cunningham has been, Ryan McChrystal just may be the hottest hitter in the lineup right now. Rhino hitting 361 at the moment. And good to see him behind the plate today. Throughout the season, we've really only seen him behind the plate when Zach Root has been on the mound. First pitch to Rhino. Jenkins Coward takes off. It's swung on and missed. No throw to second. As Jenkins Coward slides in safely. As two in scoring position now for the Pirates. But one thing, too, you look at Coach O with Ryan McChrystal. He's been really good defensively behind the plate. Of course, his bat has been really good. And maybe this coaching staff is saying, hey, let's give him a chance with somebody else other than Root on the mound. 0-1, oh, swings and pops this one up. Left side of the infield. Broderick will run in, middle of the base path, and make the catch right on the edge of the infield grass for out number two. And the strength of McChrystal's game defensively is his arm. There's no question he can shut down running games before it starts. And 
two away here in the bottom half of the first inning. No score between East Carolina and Elon. And still with runners at second and third, it's Colby Wallace. Which Colby has been in the lineup here over the past couple of games in replace of Jacob Starling, who's still dealing with that oblique injury. First pitch to Colby. Takes it for a strike. Which Friday at FAU was the first game that Starling missed. And that lineup saw Dixon Williams at third and Chaz Myers at second. But games two and three, they went with Colby Wallace and Dixon at second. A one fouled straight back, and Wallace falls behind 0 and 2. And Scotty Starr's been a staple in this lineup all year. Now, out of the lineup, there was some concern. Hey, the young guy's filling in nicely. And when you have a bat like Colby Wallace, not only a bat, but someone, too, that is right there defensively with the exactly. play third base. Exactly right. 0-2 pitch. Swing a dribbler on the right side. Holloman, the second baseman, comes over. Can't field it. He boots it. Colby Wallace reaches safely. Johnson comes in to score. And it's a one to nothing lead for East Carolina. The Pirates will take it. They get a runner in here, and the inning continues for Justin Wilcoxon. And taking full advantage is the Pirate offense. You know, we talk a lot about individual play and accolades, but team offense, Pirates just work that to perfection. Justin Wilcoxon, six home runs this year as they throw over the first. Wallace just back in in time. Had a home run in that series against FAU. Had two home runs last week to be exact with one against North Carolina State as well. First and third, here were two away. First pitch to Wilcoxon is low and away, ball one. Right, let's go back to Riley Johnson. If he doesn't tag and go to third, Pirates don't score. And the Pirates continue, or try to continue to get some more runs here this inning. 1-0 is fouled off by Wilcoxon. One ball and one strike. A one to nothing lead here for East Carolina in the bottom half of the first inning. And their first of five games this week with Elon today, Old Dominion tomorrow, and then the Charlotte 49ers in that conference series this weekend. 1-1, just off the plate. Two balls and one strike. And taking care of business here today, hopefully doing the same again tomorrow, will be a big thing for this club heading into the weekend. 2-1 to Wilcoxon, fouled off. And the count evens up at two balls and two strikes. And the pitching is what's gonna be interesting going into the weekend. Cliff Godwin mentioned today in the pregame show that both Wyatt Lunsford Shinkman and Jake Hunter are unavailable during these two games. As the 2-2 is lined down the left field line, Jenkins Coward will come in the score. Wallace will go to third. RBI single to the opposite side for Justin Wilcoxon. Two to nothing lead for the Pirates. And very good backside, inside out hitting. And heads up base running again there by Colby Wallace being able to get the third as well. Those, those hands lead the bat inside out, going the other way. So a couple of base runners on here with two away still. And again, first and third, this time for Joey Barini. And Joey with a decent weekend against FAU. Had an extra base hit in that series who swings at the first pitch and lines it out in the right. Wallace will score from third. Wilcoxon going around second. He'll go to third. Barini will try for two as he slides in safely head first with a double. Another run on the board for the Pirates, and it's now three to nothing. And very aggressive base running Pirates. Excellent job. And already a visit on the mound here for Elon. And the one thing here, Coach O, is with two outs, you get that pop-up from a crystal, all these runs coming with two outs. All of it, yeah, and, and that's a big part of Pirate baseball or Pirate offense. Let's go back to the uh, bullpen. Scott, you Conversation on the mound there for Elon. 
And it's eight hole hitter, Bristol Carter coming to the plate. Still with two outs here in the bottom of the first inning, a three to nothing lead for East Carolina. And it's second and third as well. Bristol Carter hitting 314 with runners in scoring position right now, who squares the bunt, pulls it back, and takes the first pitch low and outside for ball one. Well, line drives and ground balls, and the Pirates have done that very well with two outs in this inning. Third baseman to play in the cutout. 1-0, just off the plate with a fastball. Two balls, no strikes. And a base hit here would be a big cushion. It would certainly make Jaden Winter feel a little bit good on the mound. After very quick work there in that top of the first inning. 2-0. There's a strike right at the knees. Two balls, one strike. A 3 to nothing lead for the Pirates. Saw these runs coming with two outs. And that situational hitting showing early here for East Carolina. 2-1. Inside, ball three. And we knew the struggles of Elon's pitching staff coming in, an ERA above seven as a staff this year. And we saw that in that first game of between these two up at Elon a few weeks ago. 3-1 pitch, low and away, ball four. And the base is loaded now for Dixon Williams. And this Elon team has been struggling too over the past couple of weeks. Of course, they got swept by Stony Brook this past weekend. But Elon, certainly a club that is always going to be really right there, middle of the pack, it seems, with the CAA. Yeah, very much so. And bottom of the batting order has been juggled a little bit, but Dixon Williams still at nine, and he seems comfortable there. First pitch to Dixon. Sends it in the air out the right field. Granitell will jog in a couple of steps and make the catch for out East Carolina. And Jaden Winter back on the mound here for a second inning of work. Shane Paradine will lead it off and take the first pitch on the corner for strike one. And Coach O, it only took nine pitches for Jaden Winter in that first inning. Really looked good out there. And as he delivers the 0-1 here, swing and a miss on Paradine. As no balls and two strikes. And the one thing that you brought up was Breaking ball, didn't have a ton of movement on it, but it was fooling Elon just enough. And he's throwing it for strikes. So important. And quickly ahead, 0-2 here on Paradigm. Pitch on the way. Way outside, a good block by McChrystal. 1-2, it's Paradigm off Shack and Duffy. Due up for the Phoenix here in the second inning. Shane Paradigm hitting 274 this year, a transfer on this club. Draws a slight shift from the Pirate infield. One, two. Foul back. He's really using that breaking ball a lot and feels comfortable with it. And that's something we haven't necessarily seen a ton of in the outings from winter this year. With as hard as he throws, that's why it's mainly been a fastball guy. One, two. Line drive up the middle. Johnson jogs in a couple of steps, dives, and makes the catch. Pumps his chest a little bit as he gets up. And a beauty there, a web jam from Riley Johnson. One away here in a second. And that right there, even with the shoulder issues this year for Riley, is still not afraid to put his body in danger there for this club. One away for Connor Offshack. First pitch, a little bit high, ball one. What a year it has been for Riley Johnson, too. Not only at the plate, but defensively as well. 1-0 from Winter. Swinging a high drive out the left. Carter going to the track, still going. Now up against the wall and makes the catch for out number two. And Scotty, you know, Riley's numbers have not been quiet, not by any means. But at the same time, a little bit overshadowed by a couple of the other hitters. And yet, he's been really productive all year. Quality player. And quickly two away here for Alex Duffy. With a three to nothing lead for East Carolina here in the top of the second inning. First pitch to Duffy. Up and in, ball one. And right there, Coach O, with these first two outs this inning, 
You have two really good plays by two outfielders. 1-0 is sent in the air, foul down the right field line. Not only Riley Johnson, but Bristol yeah. Carter has had a really solid freshman campaign defensively for yeah, this club. You know, it takes more than offense to win games, and like tonight, I would say that base running and defense has led the way. Of course, Jaden Winter as well. 1-1, one, one, a hefty cut and a miss. And Winter is ahead, win ball and two strikes. The Pirate infield shifts over to the right side with Duffy, a left-hander, and two strikes on the board. Looking for another one, two, three inning here is Jaden Winter. Pitch on the way. Up and away, ball two. And a left-hander getting loose for Elon right now. Of course, Elon always treats this as a bullpen game. And we'll probably use about seven to eight pitchers tonight. Two, two, call and strike three. On the outside corner, Winter spotted it perfectly. It's his second strikeout, and Jacob Jenkins Coward. Riley walked in his first plate appearance. First pitch to Riley, off the plate, ball one. And Coach O, you can't go here without talking about Jaden Winter. Throughout 20 pitches it has been to get through Elon here over the first two innings. Corners are playing in here for Riley, 1-0. Strike at the knees, one ball, one strike. Yeah, not just flawless work, but minimal work as well. And for a guy, too, that certainly needs that boost of confidence. 1-1. One, one. A square from Johnson, pulls it back and takes it outside for ball two. And Cliff Godwin said it perfectly pregame. It's not so much that guys can step up here over these next two games. It's they presents them an opportunity to one is fouled off. They got a piece of both the catcher and umpire, I believe. Two balls and two strikes. And with this opportunity for Jaden Winter, he has certainly taken it and running with it here. Yeah, and you could say that it's an opportunity for the player, but at the same time, it only enhances the betterment of the club. Two balls and two strikes here on Riley Johnson. Pitch from Nark. Fouled out of play, third base side. Johnson stays alive. But the Pirates scoring those three runs in the first inning certainly helps pad that lead. And with the way Jaden Winter is throwing today, we might see him go a little bit longer than he was supposed to today. 2-2, Two -two, sharply hit fair down the first baseline and goes all the way in the corner and right. Johnson around first, he'll go to second. He's going to try for three. Still going through, comes in. He goes in, standing up to third. A triple for Riley Johnson. The lead it off here in a second. And well done. Scotty, I will ask you, what's the term for him? Catalyst, leader, table setter? Uh, so many adjectives to describe him and I, what he does. I, I, I certainly agree with all three you just used, but I think the one that stands out is a leader of this club. Yes, yeah, I, and I can see that. I, I think especially the... Already a change here for Elon. Man on third for Carter Cunningham. First pitch to him, misses inside for ball one. With that leadoff triple from Riley Johnson. Pirates looking to get some more runs on the board here in the second. 1-0 is tripled foul down the first baseline. And as Coach O mentioned it, so many terms you could use for Riley Johnson. And I really think that big one that stands out is leader. 1-1 one, one fouled off back towards the Elon dugout. One ball and two strikes on Cunningham. And this is a guy, too, in Riley Johnson that still has another year of eligibility left. 1-2. Inside, two balls, two strikes. You know, you have to be so impressed with the Pirate offense as well. And uh, no knock against starter uh, Hudson Monarch, but at the same time, a right-hander who throws 87, he's going to struggle against this club. Two pitch misses, a little bit in, now full count. With the Pirates leading this one three to nothing here in the bottom half of the second. Full count offering, foul back. And this was a pitching staff that East Carolina hit pretty good up at Elon a few weeks ago, scoring 10 runs in that game. And trying to do the same thing here today. 
3-2 pitch, flying in the air to left. Mallory will shade over a couple of steps, gets under it, makes the catch. Johnson will tag, throw comes in. It's way offline as Johnson scores easily. Sacrifice fly for Carter Cunningham and a 4 to nothing lead for the Pirates. And you talk about team speed as well. That a fly ball that outfielder actually had to come in on and still no shot at Riley Johnson. Just too much speed. Base is empty now for Jacob Jenkins Cowart. Four runs and three hits today for East Carolina. First pitch, swing and a miss. Jenkins Cowart was walked in his first plate appearance. For a guy who had a decent weekend down at FAU with three hits in that series, including a home run. A one pitch. Just misses outside corner. One ball and one strike. Now when you talk about catalyst of an offense, this is one of those guys. 1-1, one, one, sharply hit into the Pirate dugout. And someone might have actually caught a piece of that ball down there. And whoever it is down in the bucket just threw their hands up at JC like, hey, what are you doing, man? And it's one ball and two strikes. Liam Dabaji and into this game now to left-hander for Elon, who delivers the one-two. Called strike three. Put a fastball at 85 on the outside corner. And there's two away. And Pirates, two, three, and four in the order. Cunningham. Uh, Jenkins, Coward, and McChrystal. How about the slugging percentage? 658, 523, and 500. All three with power. Two down here for Ryan McChrystal. First pitch, checks his swing and grounds it to third. Off Shack charges in, fields it, running throw to first. In plenty of time for out number three. Booth, Philip Pilkington producing back to the ECU Sports Network studios as the Pirates lead it. Four to nothing over Elon here in the top of the third. Jaden Winter back out of the mound. Tanner Holloman, James Broderick, and Tank Yakubi do up for the Phoenix. A 1 0 count here on Holloman. Pitch on the way. Breaking ball that misses outside. 2 0. And good to have our listeners and viewers tonight along with us. A simulcast today on ESPN Plus. Winner to the 2 0. A little bit low. Three balls and no strikes, and this is the first time today that we've seen Winter deal with a 3-0 and count as it took just 21 pitches for Winter to get through these first two innings. 3-0 pitch, a little bit high for ball four, and that is the first base runner today for Elon. Got a leadoff man on with James Broderick coming up. And as we said earlier, a couple of outings earlier in the year it really started well, but didn't finish well. Important now that he turn him turn it back up a notch. James Broderick, a left-hander hitting 250 this season. Colby Wallace at third, playing even with the bag. First pitch from Winter, way outside for ball one, and Ryan McChrystal going to call time and head out and talk with Winter. And that's also going to bring Austin Knight out of the dugout as well. And we see some guys starting to jog down to the Pirate bullpen right now. Coach Gowan had mentioned that Wyatt Lunsford Schinkman and Jake Hunter, the two arms, not available during these midweek games for the Pirates. And that's strictly just rest for the upcoming weekend series against Charlotte, also due to their mainly their workload at FAU this past weekend. Coach Knight's conversation done on the mound. But the one thing, Coach O, is you do have plenty of guys down there that could come in to this game today, and you feel good about it, too. Absolutely. I mean, uh, there are a host of people you could put in this game and feel good about what you're doing. Broderick, back of the box, 1-0 pitch. There's a strike. I believe Ethan Norby is the arm that's starting to get loose. Well, he's the first one up, but uh, four others went down there with him, and uh, we could see any number of people. 1-1. One, one. Fouled straight back. And winner back ahead, one ball and two strikes. Now, Norby got that start in game three on Sunday. 
didn't have the worst of stuff in that start. And Cliff Godwin even said today in the pregame show that matchup-wise, after some errors defensively with Normie on the mound, they just felt like Hunter would be a little bit better. One, two, bounced on the first base side and foul. And it turned out to be right because Jake Hunter yeah. was dominant in that outing against the Owls in game three. Sure. And you mentioned the bullpen, Scott. You know, that's an old school ploy. You ramp that bullpen up, so too will that starting pitcher get ramped up. Way ball and two strikes here on James Broderick. Pitch on, swing and a miss. Got him with a high fastball at 91. Went away here in the third. And Jaden Winter with that look as if he wants to stay. And a bring up take your QB. But the Pirates leading this one four to nothing here in the top of the third inning. Three runs in the first, one in the second for East Carolina. First pitch from Winter, strike on the outside corner. And Norby still the only one throwing down in the bullpen right now. Yakubi, a left-hander, drawing a shift from the Pirate infield. Barini pretty much right behind that second base bag. 0-1, breaking ball, catches the inside corner. And Winter ahead, no balls, two strikes. And Colby Wallace will move now over pretty much right in the shortstop position. Jaden Winter after that mound visit, pumping some strikes here. 0-2 pitch, up in the way. Ball one. And this is kind of the same things we saw against Elon in the first game a few weeks ago was Pirate pitching really good against this lineup. One, two, fouled off. Faced this Elon team right before they went down the UTSA. And that UTSA club has kept winning since they took two or three from East Carolina. One, two, just misses that upper part of the zone. Two balls, two strikes. And it's got a Pirates at 23 and seven. But last year winning on the road was a little bit of a concern. This year, not so. Your take on that. It certainly has been the one thing that is definitely the difference from last year to this year. 2-2, two -two, college strike three. Took that one on the up and inside part of the plate. That is the fourth K today for Winter. Two way in the top of the order coming up and Kenny Mallory Jr. But yes, Coach O, I certainly agree with you. This team right here almost reminds me of 2022 a little bit where they've been so good of winning on the road here recently. Wasn't maybe not the best at the beginning of the year, but here in the middle part of the season, they've been really good at it. Yeah, and two of the tougher teams in the league behind us and Pirates on the road doing well. First pitch to Mallory is high, win ball and no strikes. And the way that they went into NC State last Tuesday and just controlled that game from start to finish was impressive. 1-0, slapped in the air to left. Bristol Carter ranges into the gap, still going, makes the over-the-shoulder catch for out number three. Fouls the first pitch out of play for strike one. Wallace, Wilcox, and Emberini. Two up here in the bottom of the third inning with the Pirates leading it four to nothing over Elon. 0-1, takes it low. One ball and one strike with Liam DeBagian still on the mound here for Elon. The lefty with an inning of work so far. 1-1, swing and a miss. Good all-speed pitch there from DeBagian. And the count goes the one and two. Colby Wallace reached on an error back in the first inning. Kind of got that two-out rally started for East Carolina. Pitch on, fouled off. Yeah, Pirates have taken advantage of the two errors from Elon Putt. All three hits, line drives. All three, and hit well. Colby Wallace, some quality of bats in that FAU series as he fouls another pitch off here to stay alive with a win ball and two strike count. And I think that's one thing that's been impressive with Colby Wallace at the plate this year is the fact that with him being a freshman, 
He's had some really good at bats in big situations. As he pops this one up on the right side, Sprock the first baseman over in foul ground, and it drops out of play into the seats. But as we see here, a lengthy at bat for Wallace, which had a lot of those in that FAU series. Yeah, another part of quality at bat, staying in the box. Middle infield back for Elon. Pitch on the way. Lines this one up the middle. Yakubi will come in a couple of steps and make the catch for out number one. And he'll send Justin Wilcox in to the plate. Designated hitter today is J Dub. Which Wilcoxon had been the guy that has been starting most of the games this year for East Carolina behind the plate. But today it was Ryan McChrystal. First pitch misses low and away ball one and another arm up for the Pirates in the pin. I believe that is Chris Kaler who is getting loose. 1-0, big swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. We talk about those quality wins on the road, but quite a few of them this year as well. You know, you go back to the, not just the North Carolina series in the game. Wilcoxon lines the 1-1 one -one out in the right field for a base hit. And a one-out base runner here for the Pirates. But not to lose track of the three games at Liberty, which were important at the time. And that's a team, too, that's helping East Carolina oh, yes. right now. They're playing really good here in conference play. Uh, I think 7-2 and two in Conference USA at this point. Went on for Joey Barini. And those are the teams that have been helping East Carolina a lot in the RPI as the first pitch to Barini misses low. You look at Liberty, Columbia is another team oh, yeah. that's helping, and Ryder's helping East Carolina right now in the RPI. Yeah. Columbia leading the Ivy, and you're, you're exactly right. Throw over the first as Wilcoxon's back in safely. We all know what North Carolina is doing. Not a great weekend for the Tar Heels against UVA, dropping two of three. But with the amount of games that they have played, or the amount of games that they've won this year, that's what has helped East Carolina a lot. 1-0 misses low and away, two balls and new strikes. And there's a lot of teams that are going to continue to do that. Which that's why this non-conference schedule, almost a sneaky good one. Another throw over the first Wilcox and back in safely. And not necessarily sneaky good from a wins and loss perspective of the other teams, but what's going on right now is why it was good. Exactly. And you mentioned Ryder. How about that club and their ascension? 2-0 hits Barini right on the backside. And a hit by pitch will put runners at first and second with one away and Bristol Carter coming up. 4-0 our score, four runs on four hits for the Pirates. And time has been called. We're going to have a chance second with one out for Bristol Carter. A walk in the first inning for Bristol today and a chance again for East Carolina to add some more runs. Wainer with the pitch home. Swinging a high drive out the left. Mallory at the track, the wall. He leaps it. It's gone. Bristol Carter put him in the home run tally for the first time in his Pirate career. And it is now a 7 to nothing lead for the Pirates. Yeah, a lot of terms can be used, turning on the baseball, but that ball was hammered on a pitch up. Wasn't sure if it was going to stay up to get out of here. It was almost tailing on a line, but had just enough air of it, under it to keep going out of here for a home run. Looked like he was driving the hammer to the baseball. Way to go, Bristol Carter. First career home run as a Pirate. And it's now 7 to nothing with Dixon Williams at the plate. Who takes the first pitch for strike one. I had a feeling that Bristol Carter home run was going to come at some point this year. A one in the dirt. One ball and one strike. And Bristol Carter continues to have a great freshman campaign. 1-1. One, one. Check swing. Appeal down to third. Steve Sanders says he went around. Has one ball and two strikes.
one two pitch hits up right on the foot I believe was that thud and the second hit by pitch of the inning and brings the top of the order back up for the Pirates in Riley Johnson Riley Johnson one for one today had a walk back in the first inning and a triple in the second. All of a sudden, it's gotten a little cloudy here at Clark O'Flair Stadium. First pitch to Riley. Up and in, ball one. Started out really sunny in this game. Actually had my sunglasses on for the first inning, but now some clouds building in, but still, when the weather warms up, we've talked about it, Coach O, weather warms up. Crowds grow as Johnson squares at a 1-0, lays it down, third base side, off Shaq, fields it. Quick throw over the first, just in time to get Johnson. Moves the runners over. And there's a man on second, two away for Carter Cunningham. But when the weather warms up, crowds get bigger, these bats heat up. And here over the next last two months of the season, I'll say, it wouldn't surprise me if East Carolina starts averaging 4,500 fans a game. Oh, especially the way the Pirates are playing, and uh, that's certainly a credit to their type of play. You mentioned the clouds and uh, first pitch to Carter Cunningham. There's a deep one to right. Granitale back at the wall. It's off of the light pole. That's home run number eight for Cunningham this year. And it is now a nine to nothing lead for the Pirates. There we go, Coach O. There's those bats heating up. Yes. The Pirates really pounding it on Elon right now here in the third inning. It really is. Nine nothing lead and although the cloud cover is there, no chance of rain tonight and no threat of rain tonight. So is the forecast. Some more two out runs today. Jacob Jenkins Cowart digs in, swings at the first pitch and fouls it straight back. Nine to nothing lead for East Carolina. Here in the bottom half of the third inning. Attacking this Elon pitching staff the exact way they needed to tonight. 0-1 is laced into the left center field gap and that'll go all the way to the wall. Jenkins Cowart will round first and head in the second, standing up. Two out double for JC and the inning continues. And Scotty, I have to ask, how many scouting reports do you think opponents get where the first term is scary offense? Probably every single one of them. Yes. Yeah, they visit most, if not all. Visit on the mound here for Elon. Nobody throwing yet, I believe, for the Phoenix. Carson Wainer already the third pitcher of the night for Elon. And that's something we typically see from this Elon staff. When they play East Carolina in these midweek games as they use a lot of arms. Not only them, when we see teams like UNCW, that's another one we see a lot of arms used. As it's a nine to nothing lead for East Carolina here in the bottom half of the third inning. And still with a man on second, Ryan McChrystal at the dish. And keep in mind here, this is the second inning tonight that East Carolina has sent nine hitters to the plate. First pitch to Rhino, takes it up and in ball one. It's hard one, Coach O, to send nine hitters to the plate for one inning a game, and for them to do it in two of the first three of this yeah. one shows how well they are hitting the ball tonight. 1-0, off plate, ball two. Seven hits for the night, and all hit well. And only three left on in this game so far. They were helped out a little bit with a couple of Elon errors there in the first inning. 2-0 pitch. There's a high drive to right. Granitale ranging back. Track, wall, and it's gone! Wasn't sure if that one was going to get out of here or not, and the wind pushed it a little bit. That's the third home run this inning for East Carolina. An 11 to nothing lead now for the Pirates. And an inning ago, we talked about the slugging percentage of two, three, and four in the Pirate order. It was just displayed, extra base hits from all. 
We talked about in the pregame show today of East Carolina just coming out and handling business in this game. And that's exactly what they are doing with no issue at this. As Colby Wallace at the plate, 0 for 2 tonight. 3-0, chops this one over the short. Broderick there to field it on a couple of bounces, throw over the first. Plenty of time. 11 to nothing, East Carolina in front of Elon as Charlie Granatel will lead it off of the Phoenix and take the first pitch for strike one. Couple of defensive changes here for East Carolina. Carter Cunningham will move to center field. And Cam Clonch now in the game at first base. A swing and a miss there from Granatel. It's now no balls and two strikes. Good to see Cam Clonch get some time tonight. Clonch will hit in the leadoff spot for Riley Johnson. Really is, really good defensive first baseman as well. O2 is fouled straight back. And Scotty, we could, we could talk a lot too about Carter Cunningham in center field and the job that he does there as well as any other position on the field. And he's just so versatile. Yeah. He can play so many different positions. 0-2 oh, here on Granite Hill. Pitch from Winner, swing and a miss. Good breaking ball on that low outside part of the plate. And there's one away. Jaden Sharp right now. Going back to Cunningham, though, you know, the underestimated part of his game is his speed. He's not just an average runner. Ryan Sprock at the dish. First pitch misses. Not sure if they knocked off from a Crystal's mitt or not. That's one ball and no strikes. But the job that Jaden Winter has done tonight, three and a third, no hits, one walk, five strikeouts. Bueno pitch, going outside. Two balls and no strikes. We'd seen some guys go down to the bullpen, but this almost reminds you a little bit of Aaron Grohler's start last Tuesday at NC State. Yes. 2-0. Strike, that one on the inside corner. And it wasn't the strikeouts for Grohler last Tuesday at NC State. It was just the fact that he went out there and pitched four solid innings against that club. Pitch home, popped up behind home plate. McChrystal can't find it, doesn't matter as it will drop on top of the press box. Also, winner's night not finished now. So this is a bit premature, but that's three really good outings. One from Kaler, one from Grohler, and now one from Winter. 2-2, Two -two. a bit low, full count. And what shows too is if these guys can continue to pitch like this as the year goes along, you never know when one of them are going to have to make a spot start in the postseason. 3-2, high ball four. And the one-out walk issued to Sprock brings up Shane Paradigm. And you mentioned a spot start, much like Danny Beal against Texas just a couple of years ago in a super regional game. Postseason play is a funny thing. It is. You've seen it plenty of times where teams have run out of pitching there for that game three. One on, one out for Paradine, who lined out the center. His first at bat, first pitch bounces off of the chest, and McChrystal goes to his right. Plenty of room for Sprock to move up the second. And the first time today that a runner has reached second base for Eli. Shane Paradine this year is hitting 240 with him in scoring position this year. With an 11 to nothing lead for the Pirates, you're not at all worried about that guy at second right now. No. 1-0, this one's hitting the air to right. Jenkins Cowart jogs in a couple of steps towards the line, still going and makes the catch and foul ground. Sprock will tag from second throw, comes in a little bit late. As Sprock slides in safely, but two away here in the fourth. And should be noted, not only a long throw, but a really good throw by Jenkins Cowart. Two down here in the fourth inning with the Pirates leading it 11 to nothing over Elon. As Connor Offshack digs in, flew out the left in the second inning tonight. Oh, infield back here for the Pirates. First pitch going away. Ball one. And tomorrow night, East Carolina facing Old Dominion. Uh, Old Dominion Club, an interesting one this year. 
1-0, misses low it away, two balls and no strikes. And it sounds like Corey Costello is going to be the one getting the start for East Carolina tomorrow. And another opportunity there for that freshman to get some quality innings in against an ODU club that has not been hitting the ball well this season. 2-0 pitch, misses inside, 3-0 here on Offshack. Now that a game that East Carolina lost on the road earlier this year. And a one that East Carolina certainly is going to want to get a win back against. 3-0, strike right down the middle, 3-1. And, and Pirates let the Monarchs stay in that game a little too long. It cost them with a the home run in the bottom of the ninth. 3 balls and one strike here on Offshack. Pitch home, swing and a miss. And now a full count. And now the game, too, like much like we saw on Saturday at FAU. The Pirates just not good situational hitting against ODU earlier in the year. 3-2 pitch. Low and away, ball four. The second walk of the inning for Winter. Puts runners on the corners. Two away for Alex Duffy. And it looks like that arm still throwing in the pen for the Pirates. Still Chris Kaler, I believe, down there. Alex Duffy struck out looking back in the second inning. Left-hander draws a shift. First pitch, up and away, ball one. An 11 to nothing lead for the Pirates here in the top of the fourth inning as Ryan McChrystal will call time and head out to talk with Jaden Winter. As this game has seen East Carolina score in every inning tonight, three in the first, one in the second. And then exploding for seven runs in the third. Conversation on the mound over with between McChrystal and Winter. And it's been a pirate night for pirate offense. He's running a big part of that. 1-0 to Duffy. A win in ball two. Jaden Winter losing a little bit of a command here in this fourth inning. Not saying that arm is tired right now, but this is certainly the longest that we have seen Jaden Winter here at East Carolina. 2-0. There's a fly ball at the center. Cunningham ranging back, still going. Gets onto you, Pirates. Contributions from Pirate fans go directly to funding NIL opportunities for ECU student athletes. And don't forget to check out the 23 Club, Team Boneyard's NIL fund exclusively for ECU baseball players. Head over to teamboneyard.org for more information and to donate today. Also, 23club.org to donate specifically to baseball. An 11 to nothing lead here for the Pirates over Elon in the bottom half of the fourth inning. New pitcher on the mound for Elon. It's it Itai Spinoza at a Fayetteville, New York. Seven appearances this year. Has been a while since he's pitched. Last against Campbell. It's just two-thirds of an inning, giving up a run in the walk. And Spinoza is who made the start against East Carolina in the first game of this series of the season between these two this year. Pinch hitter at the plate for the Pirates to lead it off. Walker Barron. First pitch takes it high for ball one. It's Barron, Barini, and Bristol Carter. And I believe it will not be Barini, actually. It seems that Nathan Chrisman has moved into the on-deck circle. 1-0, that one's in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. And much like we saw earlier this year, Coach O, some of these wouldn't say blowout wins, but be respectful here, the ones that the Pirates have handily leading in. Yes. East Carolina getting some of those younger guys in the game. 2-0, foul ball on the first base side. Two balls, one strike. I think we'll see a parade of changes, that's for sure, but for a lot of reasons. Uh, for instance, Cunningham playing center field, just to get him back out there and acclimated to that area, clinch at first base, all, all of those kind of things are needed. 2-1 to Barrett, fouls this one off. Back towards the Pirate dugout, 2-2 two two the count. And another reason, too, no reason to risk Riley Johnson's shoulders no. in a game like this. Exactly. 
Walker Barron this year hitting 500. He's four for eight at the plate. And this is a talented freshman that's going to be a good player here at East Carolina. 2-2, Two -two, just misses outside. And a full count. Walker Barron, the freshman out of Atlanta. And IMG Academy. 3-2 pitch. Grounded foul, third base side. Barron stays alive. Look at all the young guys that are playing regularly now or getting into games on a regular basis. Uh, Barron, a part of that as well. Bristol Carter, Kobe Wallace. You can even call Dixon Williams young. 3-2 pitch. Hits him on the elbow guard. And a leadoff hit by pitch here to start the fourth inning. And it'll be Nathan Crispin at the plate. So Joey Barini's night is done. And another thing, Coach O, with getting these guys in in a game like this, with it being a five-game week, it allows some of these starters, one that got in, got a couple at bats, sit down, rest yourself in a game like this. You know, and that's not just physically refreshing, mentally refreshing as well. First pitch to Chrisman. It went in, ball one. Nathan Chrisman playing in... Now 17 games this year, just one hit and six at bats this season. has mainly been pinch running and late game defensive replacements for Chrisman this season. 1-0 is low and away, two balls and no strikes. But someone too that, let's say an injury happens, Chrisman could come right in and play for this club easily. 2-0. Strike, that went on the inside corner. And you said versatile. Chrisman has played second, short, and third this year. Routinely takes ground balls at all three of those positions during batting practice. Two one, strike. And Chrisman now with an even count of two and two with the Pirates leading this one 11 to nothing. Here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. East Carolina well on their way. Still early, though, but well on their way to the first of. Win out of five games this week. 2-2 Two -two is low, full count. And a comfortable way to get this five-game week started with this 11-0 lead over Elon at the moment. 3-2. Runner takes off, up and away, ball four. First two on for the Pirates here in the fourth inning. And it's going to be Bristol Carter at the plate. I believe this is Bristol Carter. No, they are going to make another change. Chaz Myers. We saw Chaz start on Friday at FAU. Chaz, not the best of games, has knocked a home run this season. That was against UNCW. Empire's not changing their plan, just their people. First and second, nobody out for Chaz Myers. First pitch inside, snap throw down the first. Chrisman back with the bag in time. Chaz Myers, the transfer from Pacific. This was someone that had a really good fall in the preseason and one that this coaching staff certainly liked. Just had a rough start to the year. 0-1. There's a strike on the outside corner. Myers behind 0-2. You know, when you think of Chaz Myers, the home run against UNCW is what got the Pirates started. It was like they needed a jump start that night. Got it from him. Home run. If Godwin calls time, jogs up the home plate, and talks with Myers for a couple of seconds, pats him on the back. And Myers back in the box with a no ball and two strike count. Trying to drive some more runs in for the Pirates here in the bottom of the fourth inning. 0-2, line drive foul over top of the Elon dugout.
Of course, Chaz Myers, too. We've seen the power. We mentioned that home run against UNCW. And the other hits that he has had this year have been hard hit. 0-2. Called strike three. Called that one on the outside corner. Myers down looking for the first out here in the fourth. And that will bring up Dixon Williams. Dixon Williams fly out and hit by pitch tonight. Scored a run in that seven run third inning. As Cam Clonch moves into the on deck circle after coming in defensively last inning. First pitch from Spinoza. Low and away, check swing. They say Williams did not go around. Win ball and no strikes. An 11 to nothing lead for the Pirates. Swinging the bat very well here on this Tuesday night game against Elon. 1-0, fouled off over towards the Pirate dugout. One ball, one strike. And Scotty, conference play. Two of the better teams in the league behind the Pirates now, uh, both on the road. The Pirates going three and three against them. Compare UTSA and FAU for us, if you will. It certainly is a difference between the clubs as Williams grounds this one the first. Brock over the short for one. That's all they'll get. So a fielder's choice for Dixon Williams, who reaches safely. Nathan Chrisman out at second, and Walker Barrett advances to third. As Cam Clunch coming to the plate. But yes, to compare those two, UTSA has the advantage on the offensive side. And behind East Carolina, they are clearly the second best hitting club in the conference, I think. FAU, though, the one thing that impressed me with the Owls was their starting rotation. Three good arms in that rotation for FAU. And then their back end bullpen guys that came in late in those games are pretty good as well. First pitch to Quanch, grounds it in the right field for a base hit. Bearing will score from third. And it's now a 12 to nothing lead for the Pirates. RBI, Cam Quanch, well done. We talked about line drives and ground balls. He makes it work. But I certainly agree with you, though, that FAU, UTSA, two of the better teams in the American. And that's one thing we've seen in the past with East Carolina scheduling in the American is they get helped out there by getting some of their tougher series out of the way in the first couple of weeks. Yeah. These two just happen to both be on the road, and yet the Pirates come out of it in good shape. Carter Cunningham takes the first pitch for a strike. A 12 to nothing lead now for the Pirates with Dixon Williams at second, Cam Clonch at first. A home run for Cunningham back in the third inning. 0-1, just misses. One ball, one strike. Now this weekend, this Charlotte team projected to be a whole lot better than they are right now. Pitching-wise, though, they can certainly throw it. At one point, they might still be doing it. I haven't checked the numbers here recently, but they were leading the country in strikeouts from the pitching side at one point this season. As Cunningham fouls the 1-1 one, one off, falls behind one ball, two strikes. And the Pirates with another tough test next weekend too with Wichita State coming in the Greenville. And I told you a couple of weeks ago, Coach O, those were two series I'm glad that East Carolina has at home. Right. Which two clubs that are surprising me right now with how well they've played Memphis is playing good baseball right now, and then South Florida's playing good baseball as well. Well, I think you said earlier in the year, no one can figure South Florida. Uh, they'll, they'll win games and look good, and then they'll lose games and look poorly. One ball and two strikes here on Cunningham, trying to get these two runners in with two away here in the fourth. Pitch home, up and away, ball two. And you're right about Memphis. They are winning some games, but talent level a little down. And uh, at the same time, uh, those are kind of clubs that can beat you. But, but, top of the league, just a little better. 2-2 two -two pitch. Sent in the air down the left field line. Mallory will come in towards the line, now in foul ground, and it drops out of play. Now, once you get to the bottom of the league right now, those three teams of Tulane, UAB, 
and Rice. That pretty much as unless a drastic turn of events happens here, Rice is definitely going to be one of those teams that does not make the conference tournament this year. And it's going to be more than likely either Tulane or UAB that is in that other spot that does not make the conference tournament, which it's the top eight now in the American that make it. 2-2, Cunningham drives this one in the air to center. Yakubi going back, track, trying to find the wall and makes the catch a couple of steps shy of the wall for out number three. Start against UNCW a couple of weeks ago. Tossed just one inning, gave up four hits and three runs in that outing. And really, Coach O, that's only been the one bad outing that Kaler has had in his Pirate career. He started against Elon earlier in the year and had a great start against these Phoenix and looking to do the same thing here now in the middle innings. In the bad outing, the uh, team just came out and they were very aggressive. They, they were looking for pitch fastball and were getting it and uh, scored some early runs, which made for uh, not a good night, but Chris has had a good career here. Tanner Holloman, James Broderick, and Tank Yakubi do up for Elon. Holloman takes the first pitch for strike one. The 0 1 pitch up and in, 1 1 the count. Some, I would say, a lot of defensive changes here for the Pirates. We will get those to you in just a second once we get them all written down. 1 1 on the way. Breaking ball misses up and inside. Two balls and one strike. Holloman walked in his first plate appearance back in the third inning. 2 1. Called strike. That went on the inside part of the plate. Two balls and two strikes. 2-2 two, two pitch, swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Pirate pitching tonight. Went away here in the fifth. Those defensive changes for you. Nathan Christman over at second. Nick Parham in the game at shortstop and Luke Nowak in the game in left field as well. And good to see Nick Parham here defensively. Yes, absolutely. James Broderick will dig in. First pitch, he takes it for a strike. Also Luke back out in left field. I haven't seen a ton of Nick Parham this year. I believe only a couple of games he's played in. A one has fouled off. Parham, the freshman out of Asheville, attended T.C. Robertson High School, really good high school program there in the western part of the state. The 4A state title last season. And certainly a guy that could be the shortstop of the future for this club. 0-2, swing and a miss. Broderick down on strikes. Back-to-back -back K's here for Chris Kaler. And fifth inning. And Pirates have scored in each of their four innings. 12-0 our score. And the Pirates with 12 runs on nine hits. Thank you, Kubi digs in. First pitch, he takes it low for ball one with the Pirates leading it 12 to nothing here in the top of the fifth. Nine hits tonight for East Carolina. 1-0, up and away. Two balls, no strikes. Yakubi tonight, a strikeout looking back in the third inning as the Pirate pitching staff has made very quick work of this Elon offense tonight. 2-0, low at in ball three. A chance to get these young guys in for East Carolina defensively as well. 3-0, strike. And QB was making his way out of the box. Mike Parnell says, come back. And it's three and one. Kaylee with the pitch on the way. Strike. Outside part of the plate. And Kubi asking Mike Parnell where that pitch was. And it's now a full count. Pitch on. Up and away, ball four. Two out walk issued by Kaler. Puts one on for the leadoff hitter in Kenny Mallory Jr. Mallory, a transfer from Vanderbilt. One of the best hitters in this lineup and Leading this team in average right now at 378. First pitch to the lefty. Low for ball one. 
Watch this Elon Club. These are the programs that you're really going to see work the portal a lot here from year on and year on, year on and year out. 1 0 foul at a play, third base side. Well, you're so right, Scott. And I think not only, not only when uh, they lose very few players, but uh, they're just going to. They're going to replenish by way of the portal. One ball and one strike here on Mallory. Pitch home. Low it in. Ball two. And we've seen that with this team here. Good amount of transfers on it. Of course, that's the one thing that East Carolina has not used a lot baseball-wise is the portal. They did a little bit this year. Chaz Myers, the guy we see on the mound right now, and Chris Kaler. 2-1, slaps this one over the short. Parham charges in, fields it. Quick throw to first in time for out number three. It's over on the mound for Elon. 13 appearances this season for the redshirt sophomore at a Killingsworth, Connecticut. A 7.78 ERA this year for the right-hander in 19 innings of work. Jacob Jenkins Cowart will lead it off and foul off the first pitch for Strike one, the catcher Duffy caught a piece of that one, I believe. As the ball's in one strike. And Scotty, I think the pitching changes we're seeing now for Elon are either scripted or programmed or planned. And I believe we actually have some defensive changes here for Elon. We'll work on getting those written down. Chickens Cower tonight with a double back in the third inning. A one, a cut and a miss. It's no balls and two strikes. As both teams kind of empty in the benches here. Getting some guys in with this 12 to nothing lead for the Pirates. 0-2 misses high. One ball and two strikes. And East Carolina using this as an opportunity to get those guys in. Pitch home, just off the plate for ball two. Yeah, a lot of changes in the positions. It'd be interesting to see what the Pirates do on the mound in the latter half of this game. Two and two here on Jenkins Coward. Pitch home, foul it off. Third base side, Holloman making the run after. They'll drop out of play. Those defensive changes here for Elon. Yovino behind the plate, McGirt at first, Wheeler at second now. Holloman makes the move from second to third, and then Barry out and right. Two and two count here on Jacob Jenkins Cowart. Pitch on the way, fouls it straight back. And East Carolina, really the only two starters they still have in this game. They still have McChrystal in there. Colby Wallace is at third. But leaving only a few older guys in this lineup right now. 2-2 Two -two fouled out of play left field side. And Jenkins Coward stays alive. And as Coach O mentioned too, it's not necessarily just a physical thing to get that rest. He has a mental thing, too. 2-2 two -two grounded over to second. Wheeler down on the knee to field it. Flip the first. Low throw. Jenkins Coward will reach safely. And a leadoff man on for the Pirates here in the fifth. That's healthy cuts taken by J.C. and that at bat. And it's Ryan McChrystal at the plate. Crystal tonight, a home run back at the third inning. One that got a little bit of push out to right field, and since then the wind has died a little bit. First pitch, he swings and drives this one foul out of play right field side. It's 0-1. Yeah, I think Cliff has turned the hitters loose right now. A little bit of free swinging in this half inning. A one. Fouls this one off. Out of play on the third base side. McChrystal behind 0-2. And, and as you said too, Coach O, what is East Carolina going to do the rest of this game on the mound tonight? And I would think 
you give Kaler another inning here. It's obvious he's going to get one because there's nobody warming up right now. Sure. There's some other guys down there that might get some work. O2 pitch is high for ball one. With a one ball and two strike count here on Ryan McChrystal as the Pirates lead it 12 to nothing here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Pitch home, sends it in the air to left. Mallory jogging back a couple of steps, now comes in on a sprint and makes the catch for out number one. Went away, Colby Wallace will dig in. Colby Wallace. Another freshman playing right now for the Pirates. Abisco, North Carolina, Pinecrest High School. Jenkins Coward still the man on first. First pitch to Colby, strike. Colby Wallace, decent numbers this year. Hitting 235 right now, has scored a run tonight. Looking for his first hit in this game though. 0-1, fouls this one off behind home plate. And the count goes to 0-2. And, and earlier tonight we saw a host of pitchers go down to start warming at the first call. We saw De Lorenzo going down. We saw Groller going down. We saw Norby going down. So, yeah, there, there's some opportunities tonight. 0-2 line foul down the right field line. Jackson De Lorenzo is an arm we haven't seen much of lately. But it's been good every single time he's taken the mound this year. Yes, it has. Oh and two here on Colby Wallace. Pitch home, grounded to third. Holloman picks it up, throws the second for one over the first. Low throw gets away from the first baseman. Wallace will reach safely. Well, they get Jenkins Coward at second, four out number two. And just a week ago tonight, Aaron Groller with a really good start in Raleigh. And it's Walker Barrett at the plate. Two away here in the fifth inning, 12 to nothing lead for the Pirates. Walker Barrett at the plate, pinch hit in the fourth inning, was hit by a pitch in the DH roll right now. First pitch takes it high, ball one. Walker Barron, a catcher on this roster. Haven't seen him a lot in catching time this year. Has got a decent amount of bats in his freshman season. 1-0, checks the swing, it hits on the knob and goes fair, but rolls foul. About halfway up that first baseline. And a little surprised that Elon <laughs> didn't pick that ball up there. Yes, uh, let it roll foul and yet never left the batter's box. That would have been an easy out if you were to Elon defense. A one ball and one strike count here on Walker Barrett. Rest of the infield is back, except for first. Pitch home. Saw fly ball out to shallow center. Yakubi making the run in. Second baseman Wheeler goes out and makes the catch in shallow center. Four out number three. First time tonight that East Carolina sixth inning here in Greenville. 12 to nothing lead for East Carolina. Adam Berry leads it off for Elon. Takes the first pitch from Chris Kaler on the corner for strike one as it quickly delivers the 0-1. It's swung on a mist. The ball's at two strikes. Barry McGirt and Paradine. Do up for the Phoenix here in the sixth inning. 0-2 pitch. Fouled off. That one got a piece of a crystal behind the plate. Yeah, it's 0-2. Power pitchers pounding the zone tonight. Yeah, this pirate pitching staff, got a lot of zeros on the board tonight. 0-2, swing and a miss. Adam Berry down swinging, went away in the sixth. And to be exact for East Carolina pitching tonight, Four walks, eight Ks. That's the only numbers that they put up tonight. Troy McGirt in the box. First pitch to the righty, a swing and a miss. 
Eli getting some guys in off the bench now as well. Troy McGirt at a max to North Carolina, a transfer from Wake Forest. 0-1, fastball right down the middle. Taylor ahead 0-2. And, and if you can find a negative, I think, or a lack of a positive, you might say, those four walks, just a little too many. 0-2 has popped up. Into shallow right field, Jenkins Cowart coming in, will call off Nathan Chrisman and make the catch. Quickly, two away here in a sixth. Kaler gets some quick outs, and he just doesn't just work quick. He makes quick outs. And it's two away for Shane Paradot. The Pirates leading this one 12 to nothing here in the sixth inning. First pitch is high for ball one. Right hander getting loose for the Pirates. 1 0. Strike. And the thing that Kaler's done well, especially this inning, boy, is he working quick. And that is number 14 getting loose. That's Parker Thomas. Yes. 1 1. There's a strike. We have not seen Parker Thomas yet this year. A freshman for the Pirates, and it looks like he could be making his debut at some point during this game. Kaler with the 1 2. Ground ball to short. Parham will boot it a little bit, pick it right back up, throw it the first in time. Good recovery there from Nick Parham at short in time to get Paradine at first. For out number three, and it looks like we're going to have a challenge on this play at first. So hold on just a second. Naked eye, I think he got him. I didn't even yeah, think that's a question. Uh, I'm not sure that that's a challenge. Uh, I mean, he, they can certainly challenge it, but. Umpires are talking about this right now, and they are going to look take a look at this. Most of the Elon guys were coming out of the dugout. So we do have a challenge here. And that's okay. That's what uh, review is for. So we'll look at the replay monitor up here. Like I said, naked eye. I didn't even think this was really even close at first. And looking up here on our replay in the booth. Oh, yeah. Yes. He's out. No question about it. So this should be upheld pretty quickly here. We'll wait for the official ruling. But Chris Kaler working very good. It's been a great night for Pirate Pitching tonight where we have this review. We'll take a quick peek at the American Conference scoreboard in this one. Two games postponed and one canceled tonight. Memphis and Central Arkansas postponed and then UAB and Mississippi State were canceled as the umpires are back out on the field and they roll them out. So when we come back, it takes the first pitch up and in. Four, ball one. Crispin, Nowak, and Williams do up for the Pirates here in the sixth inning. Went up pitch upstairs, ball two. You know, pretty good arm strength by Parham. I think he initially gave up after bobbling the ball and then saw he had a chance. I think the base runner, or not the base runner, but the batter runner gave up a little bit there too. 2-0 pitch from Geralds, misses outside, three balls, and no strikes. Crispin pinch hit in the fourth inning, walked in that plate appearance. 3-0, grounded foul over towards the Pirate dugout. And that's three balls and one strike. Three balls and one strike here on Nathan Crispin. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. And a full count. Three two. Sent in the air to left. Third baseman Holloman will range now into shallow left field. Now comes in back edge of the infield and makes the catch in foul ground for out number one. You can hear that cheering. Yes. Another pinch hitter coming to the plate. And it's Parker Bird. Yeah. 
So Parker Bird getting it at bat here in the sixth inning. Parker's third at bat this season. Still looking for that first hit is Parker. Parker did not fly back with us coming back from FAU. And that was because he was on MLB Network yesterday. First pitch takes it up and in for ball one. Parker, part of the Challenge Athletes Foundation, having a TV appearance on MLB Network Central. Which Parker this year 0 for 1 in the plate has been walked once and struck out once. 1-0, there's an all-speed pitch, misses outside, 2-0. And, and like all the fans on their feet, really pulling hard for Parker to get a base hit. Want to see that first hit. Parker pinch hitting here for Luke Nowak in the eighth spot of the order. 2-0, swings and fouls. This one out of play on the first base side. And it's two balls in, one strike. Also would like to see him play defense as well. It's one thing we haven't seen with Parker this year is any defensive appearances. Two and one count here on Bird. Pitch home, lines it back up the middle. Second baseman comes over, fields it long throw to first in time. They get Parker a little bit soft off the bat. Thought he had it there. But Parker Bird putting the ball in play here for the second out in the sixth. Yeah, the ball wouldn't quite caught squarely, but it was hit in the right place. That ball had found the barrel, center field. You could tell, I thought that he had it. <laughs> it did look like it off the bat. So two away here for Nick Parham, who is hitting in the ninth spot of the order for Dixon Williams. First pitch, he swings and grounds at the first. Diving stop by McGirt, underhand toss to the pitcher. Geralt's covering the bag in time. Four out, number three, East Carolina. Lee just got word, too, that there is a run rule for this game tonight, assuming that, is, that it is a 10 after seven run rule. Three outs here, this would be ball game. And East Carolina would win it. Couple of defensive changes here. Carter, Cunning move, Carter Cunningham moves to left field. Jason Genesco now in the lineup. He is in center. And making his Pirate debut on the mound, Parker Thomas makes the debut. Parker, a freshman out of Bowie, Maryland, 6'2 right-hander, was the Max Preps Player of the Year for, in Maryland in 2023. A really good change in sinker is what Austin Knight told me about Parker in the preseason. And good to see the opportunity for Parker Thomas tonight to make his debut in this one. Looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter here for Elon. To lead it off, looking to see exactly what the number is. I believe that was number 39. And no official word yet as the first pitch from Thomas. Misses low it away for ball one. And, and not sure who number 39 is because there is no number 39 on Elon's roster. So. You're just going to be number 39, sir. 1-0. This is low and in for ball two. It's supposed to be Lawson Wheeler in this spot. And if that is Lawson Wheeler, maybe he's just wearing a different number tonight. As it's two balls and no strikes. Pitch from Thomas. There's a strike on the inside corner. It's two and one. East Carolina pitching tonight has been so good in this thing. Jaden Winter in that start, Chris Kaler in relief as well. 2-1 is sent in the air to right field. Jenkins Coward jogs in a couple of steps, gets under it, and makes the catch for out number one. And with one away, it'll bring Joe Yavino to the plate. Joe Yavino making his First appearance at the plate tonight. Came in defensively a couple of innings ago. Which Yavino this year, a 273 hitter. First pitch from Thomas, strike on the inside corner. A 12 to nothing lead here for East Carolina, top of the seventh inning. And there is a run rule in this game, 10 after seven. So a couple of outs here, and the Pirates will come out on top of this thing. 
A one way outside. A one ball and a one strike. Infield is shaded over just a little bit to the left side. The Pirates having a lot of new infielders in this game throughout. 1-1 one, one goes way inside. A Crystals. Mitt falls off as he tries to make the catch on it. Two balls and one strike. That was Lawson Wheeler who led this inning off. Just got word from the other side of the press box that he was wearing a different jersey tonight. 2-1 pitch. Swing and a soft pop-up into shallow center. Janesco making the run in and makes the catch. For out number two. As there's two away here in the seventh. And Elon down to their last out with a run rule with Tanner Holloman coming to the plate. Holloman with a walk-in strikeout tonight as Cocho making his way down to the field. They get in position for the post-game interview with head coach Cliff Godwin. First pitch to Holloman, grounded the third. Wallace there to eat it up and throw over the first in time for out number three. And that... Listen up, I'm about to paint the words A lyrical poet flying with the birds Pen in hand, mind full of dreams Writing rhymes that make souls gleam From the ink on the page to the beat in my heart I'm a wordsmith playing my part Spinning tales like a web of silk Crafting verses smoother than milk I'm a poet, rhythm in my veins Ink in my pen, igniting flames From the depths of my soul to the stars above I'm a poet, spreading peace and love In the silence of night, my words take flight Painting pictures in black and white Metaphors dance, similarly sway In the world of poetry, I'll find my way From sonnets to haikus I explore the range, in the realm of language Nothing stays the same, every stanza a journey Every line a tale, in the universe of Verse, I never fail. I'm a poet, rhythm in my veins, ink in my pen, igniting flames from the depths of my soul to the stars above. I'm a poet, spreading peace and love. So next time you hear my words, listen close For in each verse there's a treasure to enclose I'm a poet, storyteller, keeper of the flame In the world of rhyme, I'll forever reign